Good afternoon, AFC Bournemouth fans. We got a bit of an impromptu video. We know it's match day, and tonight on Back in the Net, we got a watch long with myself and Tom Jordan for our FA Cup match against Crawley. Hopefully, we're going to be all smiles at full time. One Cherry supporter who was all smiles this morning is pod regular Morgan Scott, who's with us. Morgan, how are you? Uh, yeah, very well, thank you. Pleasure to come on as always. Brilliant. And tell us why you're all smiles <clears throat> this Tuesday. Uh, so just about 25 past nine, I was just checking social media and watching a bit of TV. And then my phone down and I checked my phone and it rings. And I'm thinking, oh, who's this? The phone company, the bank. And it's no better than club captain and skipper Steve Cook. So you get a call from Steve Cook. So your phone rings. Is it withheld? Is it an actual mobile number? What is it? Uh, so it was an actual mobile number. Yeah. So you were just wondering who on earth it was. And... Yeah, it was just like getting any other call. And then I was like, hello. And he's like, hello, Morgan, it's Steve Cook. And I'm like, oh, this is out of the blue. <laughs> is that what you said? <laughs> Very composed of you, I've got to say. So Steve Cook rings you. How long were you talking to him for? Uh, I got about 10 minutes out of him. He was just about to go and see Jason Tindall. So I, I felt quite privileged. He was just about to go and see the gaffer after speaking to Morgan Scott. So, you know, in a bad feeling. And uh, uh, he, uh, I think he must have been five minutes, maybe four or five minutes in on his Bluetooth in his car. And then he came into training. Yeah. Um, and I, he said, oh, I got some new beat. And he was like, oh, sorry, I'm still out. And I was like, no, no, it's cool. But like, he, it wasn't like he had like a pair of like AirPods in and he was just like ignoring me completely. He was still engaged in the conversation throughout. And it was just really nice to get the perspective of a, um, the, the captain. You know, he's our captain. You know, it doesn't matter what other player you speak to. To speak to the captain's an honour. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's just made a, it, 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 it's, a, it's been quite, some people would say, you know, when a good time to speak to someone, I think today's been brilliant because I got an insight into kind of his day um, that no one else might have not had. Uh, so he, I asked him if he was starting at five and, and he said he wouldn't find out the team till five o'clock. That's how it's done these days. You can't, I know he, 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 he might know, but I very much doubt it. I know it's all hidden and around the scene and that's fine. Everyone's entitled to privacy with AFC Bournemouth. So, um, but yeah, no, that was, uh, they're here, find out. But I said, what are you kind of doing today? And he said, well, not much due to the weather. So it was raining a few hours ago. So <laughs> he said he's going to do a few bits and then um, head home. And I said, oh, well, what are you going to do? Uh, have a half to noon kipple? And Minky said, yeah, I'm quite looking forward to going to sleep for a bit. He said it can be quite a long day um, if you, with it being a nighttime game. He also mentioned that it was his favourite time if fans were allowed into the stadium that would be his nighttime game because, you know, footballers have a life uh, away from the game as well. And, you know, trying to get, if it's a 12 30 game, trying to get paths for down you at 10 o'clock in the morning, tricky. So, uh, yeah, really, really uh, detailed and really, really uh, amazing to kind of get this opportunity. Did you mention the fact that because uh, viewers have just seen that photo of you and Steve Cook from the? Uh, have you mentioned that you have met him before? <clears throat> um, did I? To be honest with you, it was a crazy few minutes. Um, yeah, I bet. I mean, look, it's great to get a phone call from any player, and this is an initiative that the club have done over the last well three lockdowns, and they're doing it again, obviously. And it's uh, for some people, it's uh, a complete pick me up when you really need one because now I think. We're all struggling and there are organisations such as Talking Cherries and on back of the net, we just sort of try to do our bit with a with a way for us to vent and, and talk to each other with the free-for-alls at full time. And I think they've been releasing videos on their official channel of players that are contacting different fans, young and old. And you know what? You could have any player, but to have the player that's come with up you know, come up through the leagues with us as supporters, League One, Championship, Premier League. He seems to understand the fans really well. He's got a connection, I think, probably better than any of the other players in the team because, he, you know, he gets stuck in, he private messages on Twitter, like people ask for shirts and all the like stuff and he gets involved in communicating with them. He's got involved with Steve Butler's 
fundraiser for the kits in Uganda and the training kits and that kind of stuff. And he's a player that really gets involved. And when you want a player that is uh, connected to the fans, that's the player you want to get a phone call from. And uh, me, I'm, I'm absolutely so impressed. So do like, were there any stories about you know what's happened this season or any you know behind the scenes goss you can tell me about? So we kind of, but I didn't have any questions planned. To be honest with you, I reckon if I wasn't so used to being a pundit on back of the net and uh, doing my own stuff on Instagram and YouTube and stuff, then probably I would uh, maybe struggle. But I kind of just took it in my stride and kind of was okay. professional about the whole situation and just kind of like, uh, it, like what people got to remember, like. They're, they're just people at the end of the day. Yeah, okay, they're on TV and stuff, but they're just people. You know, if you saw, of course, you're a bit nervous, like, you know, your hands are twitching or whatever. <clears throat> but to be honest with you, I just kind of thought, like, <clears throat> um, it was just a strange, it was just a situation that I'm kind of used to. And uh, you kind of just got to take it and you tried a bit. And we, we just got chatting and I kind of, uh, he mentioned, I, I said to him, oh God, do you remember that 50 yard tackle? Where you oh, ran yeah. and, and against Derby, and he said, "Yeah," and I said, "How were your legs?" And he said, "Oh, I was a bit tired after that one. I got a hey and I, uh, uh, and then I asked him. He they uh, I asked him about Christmas, and he said, um, he got Christmas day off, um, and for the first time, and I said, that must have been quite nice. And then earlier finished on Christmas Eve because of the postponement on Neil Wall, um, on Boxing Day. Um, we also spoke about um." He said, getting back, I asked him about, um, in terms of the league form, I said, is it better to be in the championship where you can knock on, push on and try and mm-hmm. every two or three games, you've got a game rather than waiting, make some time only, I know over Christmas and, you know, I think a few, I think over like January and February in the Prem, there a few match weeks, but normally it's, um, in the Prem, it's just once a week, ain't it? So, um, and he said, no, it's good, obviously, if you're on a good run, it's good to play every few days, if you're not, then... <clears throat> it's not so great, but um, yeah, it's really, really interesting. One thing I would like to pick up, Sam, if you, I may, is the fact that he said, uh, I think it was Swansea getting back at half two, three o'clock in the morning, uh, which is, you know, very, very late, uh, especially if I, I'm not sure how it works. I would assume that they might be lenient and let them go in at 12, one o'clock and do a recovery yeah. session. But to get up, you know, if they had to go in and analyse or whatever, I'm not sure of the player's job. They had to be there for nine o'clock after six hours sleep and all the travel and a match. Yeah. And stuff. That's brutal. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. And he, um, so, yeah, I think it's really interesting to see what the skipper said. And, uh, yeah, it's just very, very, I've been very, very fortunate today on a match day to kind of get a bit of insight yeah. into his day. And uh, hopefully... He, it will come to show his leadership will start to sh- show more uh, encouraged players on the pitch and hopefully we'll push on. So uh, how's that made you feel? How, how how much of a pick-me-up has that been on this quite dreary, grey Tuesday afternoon? That's a very good question. Yeah, really, really good. Um, So I got up this morning and I thought, you know, I, I, I kind of thought, eh, you know, and then I, I Bournemouth for um, playing, it's match day, so that's excellent. I was really excited. I know we need the FA Cup, but, you know, could you imagine if we push on and we go so far and we, you know, potentially win it? Could you imagine? So, you know, it's a cup run and anything can happen in the FA Cup, as so yeah. we know. So, um, I, I was, that was a positive in itself with everything going on in the world. And then to get that call and I was like, you know, what kind of, what should I wear today? And it only had to be, you know, I, and I put on my Bournemouth stuff and I thought, you know, I'm part of this club, no matter if it's in the disability team, if it's on back of the net or if it's talking to Cherry Star. So it's been a very good day in itself and it's only coming up to mid-afternoon. So, Yeah, well, mate, uh, it sounds amazing and it uh, sounds like they're going to be doing more of these calls and, uh, you know, maybe they'll be releasing footage of players because they did it last time where you saw it from they did. the players' perspective. Like you saw Steve Cook making the calls, Charlie Daniels, etc. <laughs> yeah, re- I mean, it's really good. And hopefully Bournemouth can, you know, make your day even better later on as we entertain Crawley. Now, they've not played for 16 days. Their last match was that match against Leeds in the last round of the FA Cup where they won 3-0. Tricky one tonight, Morgan. Have you got a prediction? Um, 
Well, Steve Cook wanted to be um, eat, eat around 10 o'clock tonight. Well, he didn't want to, but he wanted to kind of, uh, he said getting food down him at that time of night. Uh, quite tricky. So he uh, I, I hope it doesn't go to extra time and penalty if I keep doing it against Palace. Uh, but I reckon we're win. I reckon maybe two or three now. I reckon mm. I'm going to go two or three and I'm going to go for uh, Jaden Anthony. Uh, I, I, I think uh, it'd be really nice to see him get on the mark. Yes. Um, I'm going to go for Jeff Lima. If Ooh. he come, if he starts or comes on at any point, because I reckon he might score. And I'm going to go for hmm, Sam Savage. Sam Savage. Because Surridge. I've been practicing the name for weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what do you reckon, Sam? Do you reckon think, we're going to push on? Uh, you know what? I think it's going to be a hard game. Crawley, I mean, Crawley League Two dispatched of Leeds 3 0, and they they made them look really ordinary. And I think they've also got that extra incentive with John Yems and Lee Bradbury in charge, obviously ex Cherries. And they left the club under a little bit of a cloud, and they'll surely want to get one over their previous team. And I'm sure they'll be motivated and they'll be conveying that message to the players. I think Bournemouth's quality in terms of the whole squad. We've got more than them, but we haven't seen the application of it in recent games. You know, we know we're technically good enough, but whether we're doing three at the back, four at the back, whatever, it doesn't matter. Players have got to be absolutely on it, mentally, physically, tactically, you name it. So I'm hoping that this is the game that kickstarts things. It needs to be. We need to build positive momentum. Reading on Friday, absolutely massive game. And I wouldn't want to go into it by getting knocked out of the you know, the cup against Crawley. So I think, I think hopefully JT will have instilled that into the players as well. I think we'll see a blend of youth and experience tonight. I'm going for a, a 2-1 for Bournemouth. Goal scorers? No, I don't know. Not too sure. I reckon Josh King might even start. Um, <coughs> Josh King Jack Wilshire. Courage up front, maybe. Oh, that would be nice. You know Dan what? Juma. Wilsh- Wilshire and King. That's what I'm going for. 2-1. That's, that's what I'm going for. But I'll tell you what, Morgan, I'm, I'm so pleased that uh, you've had this call because... It's um, it's certainly uh, a really positive thing, and this you know this lockdown, this third lockdown, it you know it does mentally get you down, doesn't it? And then you know I know that there's you know talking cherries and all that kind of stuff, but um, having you know contact with other people, you know that's what we all need. And albeit yes, it was over the phone, but to get a call from one of your idols is um, yes, yeah, it's, it's just such an amazing thing. A few things I'd like to say before we uh, wrap this up, if I may, Sam. Firstly, thank you so much to AFC Bournemouth, <coughs> sorry, crazy boy, Anthony Marshall and uh, yourself um, in a way for kind of giving me the opportunity to come on here and uh, show the fan. Um, also, thank you, Sam, for and to the back of the net team, Mr. Tiggs, Tom Jordan, Jeff Hayward, uh, Neil Dawson, the inter- you the other night, uh, just for coming, uh, providing fans like myself and uh, everyone else to come the free for all fan previews, fan stories, just to give people um, like a way to come and express themselves, interact with people. And mental health is so important at this time. Mm-hmm. So if, if anyone is struggling, uh, feel free to contact me on Twitter or. Um, any of the back of net, net team and we're sure uh, try and help in any way we can. Brilliant. Well said. Well said. Morgan Scott, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much and uh, hopefully we'll get the win tonight and uh, free for, uh, the film with yourself and Tom, the watch along, 6.45. Don't want to miss yeah. it. Nice one. Cheers, Morgan. Thanks very much. So Morgan woke up and his day was like a, a 4 out of a 10. Steve Cook has made it a 10 out of 10. Can Bournemouth make it 12 out of 10. I hope so. Big game tonight. It's the watch along. It's a goggle box style reaction show during the game. We've got uh, a lot of features within it as well with myself and Tom. So do feel free to join us at 6.45 p.m. for two and a half hours of unadulterated Cherries action. But if Bournemouth win, that would make it all that much better, wouldn't it? See you later. Yeah.